Hi, welcome everybody to a new video. Um, today's video, we'll be talking about Desert Green. So Desert Green is, well, one of the colours in the Desert series of super granulation colours uh, that's produced by Shaminka Horidum Aquarel. So they have uh, so many series of super granulation colour and this is um, one of those five in the uh, Desert series. Um, so this colour uh, is made from two pigments, PR108 and PG26. So PR108 is our volcano red. I've uh, reviewed it. I have reviewed it um, several months back. Uh, granulating red color. Um, that's actually a cadmium red, um, but it's just beautiful. The, the granulation is, is, is crazy. It's unseen. <laughs> I've not seen this in any other red colors. Um, and the other color, PG26, is cobalt green dark. Um, and it is from the Shreminka, uh, you know, the normal series uh, of colors that they have. And together, they, I think I kind of um, was able to mix it maybe to this degree. Um, but I do, I, I do note that it's a slight difference like between this and this. Like there, you do see like the green here is actually more dark. Um, compared to here, you can see the green is slightly more bluish. So it could be um, the, the PR108 that they use uh, for the mixture. May, may be a slightly more milled down to a smaller size, so it kind of makes it a little bit darker. That's that's my postulation, my, my, my guess, yeah? So this is how you mix it. So you do have these two colors, you can make this one very easily. Um, and it is supposed to be an opaque color. Um, it has five stars on the uh, light fastness rating, which means it's excellent light fastness. It's supposed to be a semi-staining color, so we will see here later on. And it's of course a granulating color. So let's look at the um, uh, pigment information in more details. Um, so for example, if we look at the swatch, which is, which is um, this one over here, if you look at the swatch, um, you will see that when I swatch, I normally swatch it from a higher concentration at the top to a lower concentration, like a, a, a more diluted mixture at the bottom. So you do see how it goes from the mess tone to uh, a more diluted look. Um, yeah, <laughs> diluted mixture. Um, so if you look at the lines that's on top, this is the line that I actually use or I, I, I put in, I drawn before I put the paint in. So now that I draw a new line over, I'm not sure if you can see a difference. Um, it looks like there's some bright red pigment that's on top of the line. So I think the grand, the, the, the part or the um, uh, information that is opaque, it's, it's, uh, it's true, it's kind of true because if you use it at a thick mixture, at a higher concentration, you get that line disappearing. Um, particles or pigments just sits on top of that black line. So if you're using this for ink and wash, uh, just don't use too much of it. Um, and when, when we look at the um, pigment um, in water test, which means I drop paint into a diluted, into a, a patch of water, like a moist, a patch of an area of paper moistened with water, you see that 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 paint just diffuses the the green, the the cobalt green dark. Probably has a smaller, probably probably has smaller particles, so it goes out faster than the um, the the volcano red, which kind of just drops in. It doesn't flow so well, so it's just kind of. Blob, <laughs> drop into that paper. So that is a quite a nice separation, dramatic, beautiful separation. Um, even in the uh, water in pigment, so this one here, I will I paint the square with, with the paint, with um, desert green, and I drop in just water when it's kind of like half, half wet. And you can see that pushing out of the, the uh, cobalt green pale, I mean um, dark that to, to the edge, and you see that shape, the cauliflower backflow. Right now we examine the um, staining test. So normally for staining tests, I'll actually do this in front of one or everyone, uh, where I kind of try to scrub off, um, you know, parts of the uh, areas of a painted square, uh, painted rectangle. So I just use water and kind of a stiff bristle brush. So this is how I normally do it. I think you can just try for once or twice because the, the more you scrub, you, you might damage the surface. So this is as much as I can get. I would say it's true, it's semi-staining semi because I could still see uh, some of that green that's in there. Right. So next to the gradient or the gravity test, you could 
it kind of ex it kind of echoes the um, the pigment in water test where you see that green pigment just kind of travel faster than the the red one. So here I don't really use too much paint, which is why you do not see a lot of that um, red color, the red pigment um, dropping in. But you can do you do see like there's a separation, good separation. Um, let's look at the mixtures. Um, the colors, uh, when I mix this color with the uh, 12 colors of the rainbow, um, you do see um, it's pretty similar to what we get with um, the haze colors, where, where because it's pretty dark, there's, it's, this color is actually um, a, a mixture of two pigments that are kind of complementary to each other on the color wheel. So you get like a red and a, and a green. So when you mix red and green or magenta, you do get like a the, 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 the neutralization and then you get like really a grayish grayish mixture so it's like adding a grayish mixture to all the pigment the mixtures um the colors and you see that everything just becomes just de de desaturates so it's very similar to what we see in the hay series of colors where everything just becomes like less saturated everything the colors just all just you know um become muted um, but I think I would just like to kind of bring you guys um, attention to a few of these um, colors that I find really nice. So some of these yellow are pretty good. So these are kind of, um, this is with uh, the Quedacredon Gold. So I think it kind of gives you like a mustard yellow color like this one, right? So it's pretty, pretty nice to have. Um, and uh, when you mix it with uh, the, the, the Quenacridone Rose color, the magenta-ish color, you do get some of these dark perlin maroon looking like colors even the red here so these are these are pretty nice um, the neutralization uh, with the blues you don't really see much like you don't see much of a difference they, it just gets darker right but um, I think with the the warmer colors you do see a little bit more and I think especially with the yellow you get like this olive green color okay um, and when we compare it to other colors so I don't think that is I mean <laughs> look at the separation I don't think you'll see a similar color anywhere in other color other paints I don't think so um, but if you compare it to other colors in the series uh, the super granulation series by Shaminka you will know that there are actually very similar separating colors um, in a sense that they, they kind of uh, make they are made of uh, very different pigments and when they separate they get you get very dramatic um, separation for example tundra green glacier brown and tundra violet these are like I, I would put them together under the same category where you get very dramatic separation and beautiful when you use it diluted. So unfortunately here, I, I, I usually use quite a thick mixture so you can't really see that separation. Um, and from far, right, if you do not stare at it like really close, you, it does remind me a little bit of shadow green. But of course shadow green is all like, um, um, what do you call that, perlin green. It's a single pigment, um, just a dark green color, close to black. Um, it, it, there is no separation here, but from far, that mass tone does remind me of a shadow green color. So, right, all in all, um, I think it's very, it's a very beautiful color. I think you can use it in, in, in shadows, uh, rock surface, moss, like, um, you know, like, maybe a brick house with a, like overgrown with moss, uh, rust, like a green car with, with rusty bits here and there. Um, I think it would really um, be save a lot of time <laughs> and you get very dramatic, uh, you get very good separation and you get very good, a lot of texture with it. I, I think it is a beautiful color, nice to have, good to have. If you really love this kind of separating colors you um, and you don't have, okay, these two colors are not common. Um, it, Volcano Red, I think it's a good to buy, but I don't think a lot of people has uh, Cobalt Green Dark. So if you do not want to buy a Cobalt Green Dark, it's actually good to get it if you really like. So this is one of those colors that I really like from uh, Shamika uh, Super Granulation series. So do, do if you really uh, like this kind of deep green color with the uh, texture, do, do, do get this one. Um, don't miss out, it's, it's a beautiful color. Okay, so let's see how. Um, I use this in a short front drawing. Hi, so this is what I did with uh, the desert green. Um, this is a, this is primarily a, a white building uh, that um, is a short front in shop house in Singapore. It's in white in color. So of course I try to use the color uh, desert green diluted just around um, the, the white the whitish tiles, and and you can see that granulation um, the 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 coming out the separation. Um, of that uh, PR1, 108 um, on areas that are used super diluted, very diluted. And, and when I, you can see in the areas that's interior, like the darker shadow areas, I use it 
more uh, strongly in a more concentrated fashion so you do see this sep like really big separation the the, the the yellow the red coming out and also I think over here I, I also did mix it with um, some TPO transparent power orange which is a warm red orangey color to, to kind of uh, give you some um, you know make it a little bit more red so it looks uh, a little bit um, reddish tone and over here I used the phthalo green more um, and of course I added a bit of that um, desert green um, yeah and I think here it's just probably I mix everything together and just just dump that color in so all in all I think if you do mix it um, with very similar colors you can kind of change the intensity a bit and here you can also observe how that color looks um, in, in a diluted fashion so this is what I did um, I didn't do much mixing but um, I did explore the color um, in, in this drawing We've come to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see similar content. Do let me know if there are any other things that you'd like me to explore, um, other colors or other tests that you'd like me to do. Um, so I hope to see you in the next video. Um, have a good week and bye-bye.